waffles and maple syrup creamer. That is the epitome of indulgence. Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Heather and as always I'm reading with a vengeance and I hope you are too. Much love to you OGs who keep coming back and if you're new to my channel, very warm welcome to you. I hope everybody is doing very well. I hope everybody had a wonderful Christmas if that's what you celebrate or any other holiday that you celebrate. I had a pretty good Christmas. It was quiet, just me and my husband here at home. We pretty much laid in bed all morning drinking coffee and opened our prezzies right there on the bed. Gosh, that sounds kind of dirty, like I'm telling you a little bit too much about my private life, but it wasn't anything like that, I promise. Uh, but it was just a quiet day for us. It was rainy here in Savannah. It was a good day, so I can't complain. You know, to be perfectly honest, I'm glad it's all over. I, I think it's a super stressful time for most people, even though there are moments of beauty and joy and love and just wonderfulness, I think the time leading up to Christmas is unnecessarily stressful and chaotic. And I'm just so glad that's over. I absolutely love, love, love the week leading up to the new year, the day after Christmas, all the way up to New Year's. I just love the anticipation of starting a new year. I feel like that's when my creative juices are flowing and I think about things that I want to try in the new year, things I want to do. It's just a fun time for me. And I just love starting fresh. And I know logically that you can do that at any time, but there's just something about the new year that I absolutely love and get really excited about. What about you guys? What does this time mean for you? That little space in between Christmas and the new year. Do you guys have any traditions or is there something that you go through every year that's kind of thing that repeats itself every year. I would love to hear about it. Please let me know. But one of the exciting things, of course, is new releases. And I'm here to talk to you about the releases that are coming out in January that I am super excited about. And what's extra exciting for me is three of these books I actually have possession of ARCs for. So that's exciting for me. <laughs> but I always like to have the physical book here to talk to you about. So I think that'll be good for you too. I think there are quite a few books that are coming out in January. I'm here to talk to you about eight. And they're ones that specifically appeal to me, what I like, what I get excited about, what I add to my TBR. And I know there are a handful of books that everybody on BookTube is going to be talking about. One in particular that I know people are going to be talking about that I'm really not going to go too much into here because it's not really one that I'm super excited about, but I know a lot of people are going to be talking about Alex Michaelides' new book, The Fury. That's coming out in January. I read The Silent Patient. I enjoyed it. I didn't love it, but I really, really enjoyed it. I know his books are somewhat Marmite, and I haven't gotten to The Maidens yet. I know there are a lot of people out there either loved it or hate it. And I think that his books are quite like that. And so even though I really enjoyed The Silent Patient, it's not like I'm anxiously awaiting every book that, of his that comes out. But I will let you guys know that The Fury by Alex Michaelides does come out on January 16th. But I uh, am going to talk to you about the eight books that I specifically am excited about coming out in January. I'm going to talk about them in the order that they are going to be published. As per usual, three out of the eight books are mystery thrillers because that is my bread and butter. But I think there's a decent mix of books. I have a couple of historical fictions and I have one that's considered chick lit, but with a little bit of a twist to it. And I think there's just a really good mix here. So let's get started. First book I want to talk to you about is The Storm We Made by Vanessa Chan. This is a debut novel and it is historical fiction around World War II and it takes place in the country of Malaya. Uh, I believe it opens up in 1945 and we are following Cecily and she is the mother of three children. Her oldest daughter is working in a tea room, which is frequented by drunk Japanese soldiers. She is becoming angry and angrier and angrier by the day. Her youngest daughter, Jasmine, is kept down in the basement to hide from the military to be put into some kind of comfort service that was offered at the time. And her only son has been missing. So Cecily family is on the brink of destruction and Cecily feels terrible guilt about it. She feels it's all her fault because 10 years prior, 
a chance meeting with a general lured her into a life of espionage with hopes of creating a better life for her country and for her people. And what it ultimately ended up doing was creating a bigger presence by the oppressive Japanese. So once World War II comes around, things are worse off than ever, and specifically for Cecily's family. I believe this is going to be from the perspectives of each Cecily and her three children, which I think will add a depth to the story. This is going to be about war and the ambiguity of right and wrong during wartime, the relationship between the colonized and their oppressors, and just more specifically about a mother who really wants to take care of her family, but she's an unlikely spy. And we're going to learn about all the consequences of her actions to try to make a better place for her family and her country. The Storm We Made comes in at an accessible 352 pages, and it comes out on January 2nd. Next up is Rabbit Hole by Kate Brody, another debut novel, and this is a mystery thriller. In this one, we are following Teddy, and 10 years ago, Teddy's older sister Angie went missing, and she was never found. The case remains unsolved. Now in present day, Teddy's dad, Mark, has killed himself. And after his death, Teddy discovers that he was really involved in this online community on Reddit that explored conspiracy theories surrounding Angie's disappearance. And Teddy finds herself falling down that rabbit hole as well. Do you see what I did there? So as Teddy gets more and more deep into this online community, she starts her own investigation. It gets her into trouble with her gun nut boyfriend. It gets her into trouble with her colleagues at the high school that she works at. I guess she teaches English at a high school. And she also meets someone named Mickey. And I can't really tell from the synopsis if Mickey is male or female, but Mickey is an amateur sleuth who is trying to solve Angie's case and Teddy gets involved with Mickey, an obsession starts and it grows. Teddy starts to lose herself as she is getting deeper and deeper into this investigation and losing herself in this rabbit hole of this online community. And we follow this story as either Teddy solves this case or she destroys herself in the process. I think this is going to be a twisty thriller. I think it's going to be a good ride. I think it's going to be a look into like crime fandom and the voyeurism of the internet and how we can really lose ourselves when our minds get twisted by grief. I think it's also going to be specifically relevant to the times we are in now. Rabbit Hole comes in at 384 pages and it comes out January 2nd. Okay, one of the first books that I actually have a copy of is Midnight by Amy McCulloch. I think this was originally published as an ebook sometime in 2023, but the hardcover is going to be published in January. This is a mystery thriller. It's also an isolation thriller. We're following Olivia, and she is on a cruise ship in the Antarctica Drake Passage. She's with her high-powered art dealer boyfriend who has kind of put together a group of people to have an at-sea auction. And then, of course, people start dying, as they do. There's really not, I think, a whole lot to this book. I think it's just going to be an isolation thriller. We're in an unusual location. We're in Antarctica. It's at the time of the year where the sun is never setting. We're on a cruise ship. And we're going to find out who's killing people. I think the cover really grabbed my attention on this one. And of course, I just love a good mystery thriller. So here's the cover, Antarctica. It says, when the sun never sets, there's no place to hide. It could be good. It kind of has vibes of The Woman in Cabin 10, I think, by Ruth Ware. It's a nice, easy 336 pages. And Midnight comes out January 2nd. Next up is Unsinkable by Jenny L. Walsh. This is historical fiction around World War II. Does that surprise you? Yeah, this book ticks a couple of boxes for me. Historical fiction, World War II, we have two women and we're following their stories and somehow they're connected to each other. So we have Violet, who is a nurse and she is a survivor. She has survived a couple of ship sinkings, one of which being the Titanic, and another one during World War I. And after that one, she wonders if she will be able to put her life at sea behind her and find love and a life of her own after all of the hardship of her life. She grew up one of nine children. Her mother was always ill. It was just always a life of struggle and survival. And now in World War II, she finds herself as a nurse on another ship, surrounded by soldiers who could be her brothers. They're so young. 
and we follow Violet's story from there. We also follow Daphne, who grows up as an unwanted child after her mother dies. But being a survivor herself, she throws herself into her education and she defines a love for languages. And this love for languages leads her into a career as a special operations agent for France. So we follow Daphne's story from there. So this is going to be a story of two incredibly strong women. They're survivors at their very nature, and there's going to be a connection between the two. And I'm very much looking forward to finding out what that connection is. This is going to be a story of survival and finding one's own happiness. This just ticks all the boxes for me. I'm super excited for it. Unsinkable comes in at 352 pages, and it comes out January 9th. This next one I have an arc of as well. This is The Search Party by Hannah Rochelle. This is also also an isolation mystery thriller, but it's got a couple of extra bonuses that caught my attention. One of them is that it's Britlick, and of course I love a good story that takes place in the UK. This one follows Max and Annie, and they decide to leave the rat race of London, and they take their 12-year-old son, and they open a glamping site out in the quieter areas of Cornwall. And before they open to the public, they decide to have kind of a soft opening, a dry run, if you will, and they invite three of their university friends and their families to come and stay for a weekend. Some tensions arise between the family's children and, of course, subsequently with the parents. And then a storm comes in and everybody is trapped at the glamping site and secrets come out. And then one of the group disappears. I'm not really sure if there's multiple perspective here, but I think the story hops around from what's going on in the glamping site where the families are trapped and the police investigation and a hospital room. So I think that adds a little unique aspect to a mystery thriller. I think this also has a compelling cover. So we have another twisty destination thriller, but I think we're going to be talking about the tenuous bonds between longtime friends and the incredible lengths people will go to protect their kids. At 352 pages, the search party comes out January 16th. Switching gears here, we're moving on to Light of the Fire by Sarah Lynn Brooke. This one is a contemporary fiction and it is following the friendship of two young women, Beth and Allie. They were high school friends, they were star athletes in high school, and 20 years ago when they were in high school, a out of control prank ends up destroying the high school gym and threatens the athletic futures of Beth, Beth and Allie. But Beth and Allie kind of go on with their lives and someone else is blamed for that prank. Over the years, Beth and Allie have become estranged. And now 20 years later, they are both at a crossroads. Beth has had a concussion that ends her successful career as a soccer player. And Allie has found herself unexpectedly pregnant. And they both decide to go back to their hometown. And among other things, they want to mend their relationship. But things are made complicated when Jordan, a former classmate, decides to pursue an investigation into that prank that led his father to be wrongly convicted of. So, of course, as secrets are coming to light, Beth and Allie have to decide whether they're going to run away again or if they're going to face up to what happened 20 years ago and suffer the consequences. So this is one of those stories that just appeals to me because we have these two women their relationship, they're close, they love each other, something happens, they go their separate ways, they're estranged, and then they're brought back together again. And then, of course, we have this other mystery that's happening in the background. And those two things combined really, really appeal to me about a story. So hopefully it's done well. Light of the Fire comes in at 308 pages, and it comes out on January 23rd. So I think this next one, more people are going to be talking about it because it is an author of another popular book, but I'm just as excited as everybody else. And the book I'm talking about is No One Can Know by Kate Alice Marshall. Kate Alice Marshall also wrote What Lies in the Woods, which is a book that I featured on one of my new releases that I'm excited about earlier in 2023. I haven't gotten to it yet, but it's still on my TBR. I've Heard really good things about it. When I saw that she's coming out with a new one, I'm just going to add to my TBR. Of course I am. This is another mystery thriller, but this one has, I think, an element of horror in it. So, of course, that appeals to me. 
So in this one, we have three sisters, two murders, and tons of secrets. What more can you ask for? So we're following Emma, and Emma has not really told her husband a whole lot about her past. All he knows is that her parents are dead, and she hasn't spoken to her sisters in years. So Emma and her husband are living their life, but things get complicated when Emma's husband loses his job. They also lose their apartment. Emma finds herself pregnant. They just find themselves in financial dire straits. But Emma is forced to tell her husband that she does have one last asset, and that is her parents' huge estate, which she co-owns with her estranged sisters. And for whatever reason, the house can never be sold. So she decides with her husband that that's where they're going to live until they can get back up on their feet again. Another secret comes out when they get there is her parents didn't just die. They were murdered. And on top of all of that, there are rumors that Emma did it. So as Emma and her husband move into this house and try to settle in and put their lives back together, old secrets are coming out. Emma has never spoken to her sisters about what happened to her parents. And the fact that Emma and her husband have moved into the house, it is likely going to lure her sisters back. There are secrets that the family doesn't want known, as well as certain people in this small town don't want known either. We're going to be following Emma as she tries to reconnect with her old family and hold together her new family, and that the secrets everybody has kept for so long are now putting everybody in danger again. I think this one sounds great. I feel like this is going to be one of those ones with an unreliable narrator. I could just be making that up. Who knows? But this one sounds fun, don't you think? No One Can Know comes in at a perfect length of 336 pages, and it comes out January 23rd. All right, this next one is a little bit off the reservation for me. This is the one that I refer to as Chicklet, but with a little bit of a twist. The book I'm talking about is Clover Hendry's Day Off by Beth Morey. And look at this cover. We have a woman carrying a bunny in a backpack. So yeah, that grabbed my attention, but then I read a, read the back, and this is supposed to be kind of along the lines of Ferris Bueller's Day Off, but the protagonist is a 46-year-old woman. So of course we're following Clover, and her whole life she has never said no to anybody. She's one of those women where she tips her hairdresser even though the cut is hideous, or she tips people even if the customer service is terrible. She's always patient with her horrendous mother, who I guess treats her terribly. She always says yes when her boss asks her to work late, even though she knows she's being taken advantage of. She's just always been a giver, giver, giver her entire life. And finally, something happens where she decides that's it. She's going to say, fuck it all. I'm going to have a day just for me where I do everything that makes me happy. And the only person I'm going to say yes to is myself. So I think the fun of the book and the humor of the book is going to be this time that Clover decides to treat herself and do everything that she wants to do and finding her own happiness and finding a life of her own and just connecting with her true self again. But I think the deeper part of the story is going to be what triggered it all. And I'm really, really interested to find out what that is. And again, just like Iona Iverson, I am interested in reading another book where we have a strong, smart, compelling character who's in her 40s and just slightly more relatable to someone like me and perhaps a lot of you. I think it's just going to be one of those fun weekend reads, but I don't want to underestimate it. Clover Henry's Day Off comes in at 336 pages and comes out January 30th. Okay, the last book that I want to talk to you about is one that I got my hands on an arc for. So I'm really excited about it. I think this one is going to be a popular one. There's just something about this one that just tells me it's going to win a lot of rewards. It's going to be just one of those books everybody's going to be talking about. So the book I'm talking about is The Mayor of Maxwell Street, and it's by Avery Cunningham. This is a debut novel. It's a little bit chunkier than the other ones I've talked about. This is historical fiction, but I think it has elements of a mystery and a romance in it. And I don't want to leave anything out as far as the synopsis is concerned. Like I said, I think this one is going to be a really important one for 2024. So I want to make sure that you guys know the exact synopsis. So I'm just going to read it to you. So the year is 1921 and America is burning. A fire of vice and virtue rages on every shore with Chicago at its beating heart. 
20-year-old Nellie Sawyer is the daughter of the alleged wealthiest Negro in America, a Kentucky horse breeder whose wealth and prestige catapults his family to the heights of the exclusive elite black society. After the unexpected death of her brother, the family's presumed heir, Nellie goes from being virtually unknown to a premier debutante overnight. But Nellie has aspirations beyond society influence and marriage. For the past year, she has worked undercover as an investigative journalist for the Chicago Defender, sharing the achievements and tribulations of everyday black people living in the shadow of Jim Crow. Now her latest assignment thrusts her into the den of a dangerous vice lord, the so-called mayor of Maxwell Street. Charming and mysterious, Jay Shorey strives to balance his connection to the Chicago underworld with his desperate yearning for the refinement and protection of high society. Born in rural Alabama to a murdered biracial couple, he knows firsthand what it means to be denied a chance at the American dream. When a tragic turn of fate gave Jay a rare path out, he took it without question. He washed up on Chicago's storied shores and never looked back until now. When Nellie's and Jay's paths cross, she recruits him to help expose the mayor and bring about lasting change in a corrupt city. Trapped between the monolith of Jim Crow, the inflexible world of the black upper class, and the violence of Prohibition-era Chicago, Jay and Nellie work together and stoke the flames of a love worth fighting for. And yet, as with all dreams in America, there is a price to be paid. What risk is Nellie willing to take for a young man willing to risk it all? So this is at once an epic love story, a riveting historical drama, and a brilliant exploration of Black society and perseverance when the 20s first began to roar. I think this one's going to be big for 2024, and I'm so happy that I got an arc for it. This one's a chunky 518 pages, and it comes out January 30th. So that is it. Those are the books that I am super excited to come out in January of 2024. Which of these sound like the most compelling to you? I would love to know what books are you guys excited to come out next year or specifically for January? Please let me know or you can just say hi down in the doodly do. If you're still watching at this point, please consider giving that like button a boop and a subscribe would be great. As usual, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.